Hey everyone, my name is Nick Raboy from MongoDB. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at some of the positional operators for working with arrays in MongoDB. So we're going to be looking at a variety of use cases, and hopefully it makes things a little easier when it comes to doing various update statements when you're working with documents that might include arrays. In this tutorial, I will be using the Visual Studio Code extension for MongoDB when working with my MongoDB database and collections. You don't need to be using the Visual Studio Code extension. You could be using the CLI. You could be using one of the programming drivers. Whatever you feel the most comfortable with will be fine for this particular tutorial. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. I've already established a connection to my cluster. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new playground. For the database, I'm going to be using a database called Pokemon. Now, in the spirit of the Pokemon 25th anniversary, we're going to be working with Pokemon data to make this example kind of fun. Let's go ahead and remove all of the other boilerplate code that was added to this MongoDB playground as part of the MongoDB Visual Studio Code extension. So before we start working with these positional array operators, let's go ahead and populate our collection with some data. So let's say db dot Pokemon game dot insert one. So we're going to insert one record. Now what I'm going to do to save us some time is I'm actually going to paste in a sample object. So this is the document that will be inserted into our MongoDB collection. In this case, our document ID will be red. Red will represent one of the old school Game Boy Pokemon games. So there was red and then there was blue. Inside of this particular document for the Game Boy game, we have an array of Pokemon. So let's go ahead and use the scenario that this document represents the Pokemon data and everything else that has to do with this particular video game. So in this case, the Pokemon array represents each of the Pokemon that is available to be found or caught inside of the Pokemon Red game. Now you'll notice that I do have a number zero and for the name, missing no. Now, if you're familiar with the Pokemon games, you'll remember that this is actually a glitch Pokemon. It's not an actual Pokemon, but it is something that you can do inside of the red and blue games. Let's go ahead and use a fictional story around this Pokemon. This is not a real story. This is something that I'm making up. Let's go ahead and say that the developer of the Pokemon red and blue games decided to leave missing no in there because at a later date, they had anticipated on changing it with a actual Pokemon number and name. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually do that switch. We're going to assume that this document has already been populated. Everything's good. We actually now want to replace missing no with a real Pokemon. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do our actual insert. So let's go ahead and run that play button. And you'll notice that it says inserted ID uh, is red. So the insert was true. And we can validate that by saying db.pokemon game.find. And what we're going to do is we're also going to add a drop statement before the insert. And we're doing that so that way every time we run our playground, it's going to insert our document and then do the find. Otherwise, we're going to have numerous of the same document, or in this case, because ID has to be unique, we'll end up with errors. So we're going to say db.pokemongame.drop and I'm going to say run. So this is the only document that appears in the Pokemon game collection of the Pokemon database. So let's go ahead and do that first positional operator, which in this case will update the first entry that is matched. So in this case, if we do a search in our update, so our, our update criteria is for missing no, well, we only have one in this example, but provided we had two, only the first would be updated. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and say db.pokemongame.update. Now our update, it does require a search criteria, so a match criteria, and then what kind of operation we want to do, which in this case is going to be a set. So our search criteria will be pokemon.name. So in this case, we're going deeper into our document. So we're saying Pokemon, and then name, even though this is an array, we can still use dot notation without having to provide an actual index. We're going to say Pokemon name is missing no. 
Now, if that was matched, so if we match a particular Pokemon or a Pokemon name within this array, then we actually need to do our operation on it. So we're gonna say set. And we're gonna say Pokemon. And we don't know where that match was found. We don't wanna we don't want to replace the entire array. We don't want to have to do any kind of manipulations client side. So we can use the dollar sign operator. So this is a positional operator for arrays in MQL, so the MongoDB query language. And then we're gonna say name. So whatever the match was, we're gonna set it. And in this case, I'm gonna set it to Agumon. Now, if you're sharp, you'll know that Agumon is not an actual Pokemon. That's actually a Digimon, and that's two different franchises. So realistically, the developer probably will not be changing missing no to Agumon, but it is an example that we can play around with. So let's go ahead and copy this. And we're gonna run it. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna start with a clean slate because of our drop. We're going to insert one document and then we're gonna update anything that has to do with missing no. And we're not gonna update the actual number, but we are gonna update the name. So let's go ahead and run it. So as a result, we now have a find that returns Agumon and not missing no. So we were able to do an update based on one particular element in that array. So let's come up with another scenario. So if you're familiar with the Pokemon games, you'll know that you have a team of Pokemon and you go into battles with other trainers, gym leaders, and even wild Pokemon. And when you win those battles, you get experience points. Now in most of the games, to get experience points, the Pokemon actually has to be in battle, but we're gonna make some changes here. What's gonna happen is when the battle is over, all Pokemon are going to have an increase in their overall experience points. So what we wanna do is we want to update all elements in an array without actually replacing them. Let's go ahead and make some manipulations to our insert statement. We wanna make a change because we wanna now deal with teams. So instead of erasing Pokemon, we're just gonna leave it there and we're going to add another array to that document. So now we have a team. So the team is going to represent what is actually in our team in the game for the player. Let's go ahead and make changes to that update statement now because our team, it now has Bulbasaur and Pikachu. Usually you're gonna have more than that, but what we wanna do is we wanna increase their experience points because we wanna say that, you know what, they won a battle, they need to grow in levels or possibly evolve. So let's change our update statement. So this time our update criteria is going to be if there's a match on the ID. So the ID is going to be the game, which is Pokemon Red. If there was a match, instead of doing a set, let's go ahead and use an increase. Now, instead of using the dollar sign operator, because the dollar sign operator will do a first match, we want all records to be updated. So we're gonna change this to team. We're gonna change it from dollar sign to dollar sign and then empty square brackets. And then we're gonna say XP. And we're gonna increase that XP by 10 because we're using the increase operator for MongoDB. So let's go ahead and run it. So we have our new document, and for our team, Bulbasaur has 15 experience, and Pikachu has 42. But if we look at our original document here, our Bulbasaur has 10 experience points, and our Pikachu has 32. So both of them were increased by 10. So we were able to update every element in this array. So we're gonna go into another scenario. So our another scenario, it's not gonna be around the Pokemon games. It's gonna be around the Pokemon trading cards. So we're, we're gonna keep that trend of working with Pokemon data because we're in the spirit of the Pokemon 25th anniversary. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another insert operation. So we're just gonna scroll down instead of actually wiping everything out because this is gonna be a different collection that we're working in of the same database. And to save us a little bit of time, I'm actually going to paste in our insert many operation, which is going to include Pokemon cards rather than the Pokemon game. So I inserted it. So if we look at this insert many statement, which is going to insert multiple documents at once, we have two users. We have a user that represents uh, N Raboy as well as M Raboy. So two different people and two different Pokemon card collections. So the cards represent what each of these two individuals have in their collection. So for example, Enra Boy 
has a Charizard, a Pikachu. Uh, they have certain variant information. Emra Boy has Pikachus as well, but they're slightly different in variation. But the whole point here is, you know what? Pokemon is a hot topic right now. The Pokemon cards, they're increasing and decreasing in value just like stocks. So what we want to do is we want to update the value of the cards across the documents in our collection. But we don't want to do it for all cards. So for example, maybe I only want to update uh, the Pikachu variation with the red cheeks, but nothing else. We're going to do that based on an array positional operator, but this time using filters. So that way we can filter for specific elements in that array. Because if you think back, our two other positional operators included, well, we've updated one match, so the first match, or we've updated everything. But in this case, we don't want to update the first, and we don't want to update everything. We want to update specific elements. So let's go ahead and make that possible. Let's go ahead and, and start constructing a new update operation. So I'm going to say db.pokemon, and we're calling this one collection.update. We're going to provide it some match criteria. So in this case, you know what? I only want to update the Enra Boy collection. So the collection of cards, not the collection within MongoDB. So the collection of cards. So the match is going to be ID. And it's going to match on Enra Boy. If we wanted to, we could have no match. Um, it's totally up to you. So we're going to match based on uh, the ID of Enra Boy. And if there was a, a match, what we want to do is we want to do a set. So let's do a set. We're going to update the value field with the new price value of that card. Now, before we get into the actual set operation, we're going to jump down to some array options. So we're going to add a filter to this operation. So what we're going to say is we're going to say array filters, and we're going to provide it a list of possible filters. So the first one, this is an object. We're going to provide any field that we provide in this particular object is going to act as an AND operation. So this is our chance to search for certain array elements that meet this criteria. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say element X, and this is no particular naming convention for element X. This could be called whatever you want, but you'll have to be consistent in the next step. So for element X, we're going to search based on the name. And this should be in quotes. So the name has to match Pikachu. But if you recall, if I scroll up, there are certain variations of Pikachu. We have a Pikachu base with red cheeks, and we have a McDonald's Pikachu. Well, you know what? I only want to update the price of the Pikachu with the red cheeks. So we have to add a little bit more criteria here, so that way we don't update the wrong card. So let's go ahead and say element x dot set, and this will be from the base set. And for our example, we could leave it at this, but in a realistic example, there are other versions of Pikachu in the base set. So we're going to take it a step further. We're going to say element x dot variant, and we're going to say red cheeks. So that's going to be our array filters. So let's go ahead and go back to that set. This is where we can actually make use of those array filters. So for set, I'm going to say cards because cards is the field name of that array. I'm going to say dollar sign. I'm going to say square brackets. But instead of just leaving it as square brackets where it updates all elements in the array, I'm going to be specific. I'm going to say element X. So this is where it has to match the array filters. So for this particular set, it's going to look at whatever the match was for element X in the array filters. And if it was found, I'm going to update the value. So the value of the field for that particular card element. And I'm going to update it to $350. Now, I'm also going to scroll up to the top here, and I'm going to say db.pokemoncollection.drop. So that way we start with a clean slate every time. And I'm going to run it. So it did an insert true because it ran through everything and it only shows us one result inside of the of the inspector for Visual Studio Code, which is fine. The last one, which is insert many, we forgot to do a find afterwards. 
but let's go ahead and do a find anyways, because we know that every time we run it, it's going to start with a clean slate. So let's say db.pokemoncollection.find, and we're just going to find anything that, that pops up. So I'm going to run it. And this, remember, is just the Pokemon cards because Pokemon Collection, whereas the other one was Pokemon Game. So this is the Pokemon Collection. Now, our Pikachu is no longer valued at $300. It's valued at $350 for the Red Cheeks. We only did the edit for Enra Boy. So if we look at the Enra Boy, the value is still $300. Likewise, the value for Pikachu McDonald's Edition is $10. So let's go ahead and change this a bit. Let's go ahead and change this to en Emra Boy instead of Enra Boy because Emra Boy has two Pikachus. I'm going to run it again. So if we look at Emra Boy now because it ran, Emra Boy, $350 for the Red Cheeks base set Pikachu, whereas the McDonald's price did not change because that was based on our filter. Now let's go ahead and complicate things a little further. Let's say that we want to update numerous array elements in one operation. So let's say that we, we know that the price has changed for two different cards or three different cards. It doesn't matter. We want to update multiple in one operation, even though these cards, the criteria is going to be different. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's go ahead and add another array filters. And I'm going to say that this is going to be element Y. So it is not element X. This is a different filter. Element Y dot name. And we're going to say that this one is also Pikachu. And this is going to be that McDonald's edition one. So I'm going to just copy it over. All right, so we have to add the element Y to each one of these as well. So we have two different filter possibilities. If we were to run this, uh, it might error out. Let's go ahead and try it. Yeah, it, it threw an error because we're not actually using element Y after we've tried to filter for it. So what we want to do is we want to go back to our set. We want to do comma. And essentially, we want to say cards dot dollar sign square bracket element Y instead of element X. And let's go ahead and say that the McDonald's Pikachu is now worth $20. So you'll notice that we can do two different sets. We're doing one based on if element X was matched uh, and one based on if element Y was matched. Now, if Y doesn't appear, it's fine. It's not going to throw an error because we're trying to use it. So, but if it does, it's going to update both. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So I ran it. The Red Cheeks Pikachu is now 350 and the McDonald's Pikachu is now 20. And likewise, if I change this to Pikachu 1, which isn't going to exist, I'm going to run it. It'll run fine. There was no match for this Pikachu 1. So the Red Cheeks was set to 350, so that was changed. But the McDonald's edition was not changed because it didn't match that filter. So we were able to update numerous array elements in a single operation without having to do any kind of client-side logic using this particular positional operator. So you just saw how to use the positional operators within MongoDB for working with array data. Now, we saw three examples, all of which included a Pokemon spin on things, but it should give you an idea on what it takes to actually do manipulations to your documents that include arrays without having to worry about doing numerous operations or extensive client-side logic. If you want to learn more about the MongoDB query language, head on over to developer.mongodb.com. I've actually written other tutorials and recorded other videos on using various CRUD-based operations in MongoDB using, in this case, the MongoDB Visual Studio Code extension. If you want to learn how to install that extension and get started with it, go ahead and check out some of the tutorials on the subject matter on the Developer Hub for MongoDB, so developer.mongodb.com.